begin this let's hang out here I just did um, your midterm grades or evaluations um, in general pretty good um, let's get over here um, I wanted to go over a couple notes. Um, uh, most of you are not filling in your files um, with these uh, 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 specific um, assignments in them. Um, what, uh, uh, for example, um, what they need is just to have you do screen captures in each file format. Um, I thought I could pull it up here. Maybe I can't. Um, uh, what is needed? Yes. Um, um, your 3D printing, uh, there's a lecture file on that here. Your blogs, you have 20 on the stimulating viewing. A lot of you um, did some pretty insightful writing on um, of, uh, the social dilemma the future of work and death. Um, a lot of you like that video of non-traditional performance spaces, especially a lot of people reacted to the uh, the dance, the dancer underwater, which was kind of incredible. It was beautiful, um, not so mind shattering, shattering, but it was aesthetic and um, and again it it pointed out the the relative differences between art and technology and coming to an equal table with both. She's performing deep underwater, no bubbles rising from her body or her mouth. Um, they had to know exactly her uh, capabilities of going up. There's a sense of danger, um, all those wonderful things. So. Um, I was glad to see people are getting into um, the non-traditional performance spaces. Um, and you're writing about them in your blogs. Um, the DAWs, the di digital audio workstations, I included 10 free-ish DAWs out there. I use GarageBand because I can hook a MIDI right into this um, PowerBook. MacBook Pro, 16 inch. So work on something, or again, trying to create these audio landscapes that can be turned on and left on. Um, an important personal space, I want you guys to think of a space, maybe you have photographs of it, maybe it's somewhere you've been. A lot of you are from all over the world, so maybe it's a place you can find an image of on Google go get it, write a little re uh, report on it, reaction. Nightclub, I was very pleased at the, the sophistication of it, but I do need all of you to in include all of your SketchUp works, everyone, um, because it seemed like two or three people were pulling on the project and um, it, I had a hard time um, understanding what roles were taken on during the regular semester I have this as a as a, um, a group project but in this as you see down here SketchUp studies I need all of you to do SketchUp studies there's no neglecting that for your grade that was the nightclub the brief the budgeting the wise to why to the how to what it's focused on the SWOT analysis all that other good stuff Replica, only one or two of you had it. It was pretty fun. Um, Jay did it. Um, uh, dig in. Ask her, him or her weird things. Um, and do screen captures of it. Um, push the Turing test. Is this um, a... Could you fool anyone that this is a sentient individual? I did one and I said I was falling in love with it and I just got these pat answers back. So I guess it didn't pass the Turing test for me. Um, but maybe you'll get some sort of leverage in there to understand, are you talking to a machine or a sentient uh, being? 
Um, your SketchUp studies, you need to do that. That's on your club work, um, theater work. Uh, spatial I.O. we're doing as a final project. Uh, social VR, how exciting. Probably the only class on campus doing this. And um, Spatial I.O. has uh, upgraded their game in this. Um, texture videos, I need at least six. Five second bursts of nature, of technology on the screen. I left you some examples. Um, uh, I need your files full, filled with this. And your VPL, there are a lot of VPL, visual programming languages. Touch Designer now is emerging as the favorite, um, but there's been VVVV, um, uh, Pure Data, uh, Processing. My weapon of choice here is Max MSP. It's been around for 30 years. That's dinosaur years. Um, so I want you to do screen captures, build these video um, uh, filter texture uh, controllers, uh, crossfaders, and um, since you cannot um, save um, these files, you get a month free copy, I want you to screen capture again. So each one of these files has a screen capturing in it. Um, so please do it. Um, please to see that some of you, most of you, are trying to get leverage, the, the, the why to behind each of the the videos you see, some of my lectures, um, thinking about uh, just what narratives are. Uh, uh, my lectures oscillate. I go from the macro to the micro, macro to the micro, um, uh, uh, larger philosophical questions back down to the how-to. Um, as you saw in the videos I did with Rick, it was like how to stage an off-off Broadway piece, you know, from scratch. Um, why would anyone pay to see this? What, what possible position in a culture, a culturated society would have this? Um, so all these questions abound. Um, so that's it. Please accommodate all those files. We have less than three weeks now. Um, and um, so fill them up. Um, the, most of you are getting it. Uh, Justin is helping, obviously. And let's go back to, um, since a lot of you responded to the underwater dancer, I wanted to do this thing on, um, uh, back to Andy Goldsworthy, just dealing with found things. Um, just dealing with this dancer who said, uh, you know, I bet it's very beautiful to have me appear, a dancer, a professional dancer, appear weightless 30 feet down in water and find the temperature where the water is at the clearest. I forget what you said. It was warm or cold. I think it's warm had to. And um, have that sense of weightlessness, but a sense of fragility and a sense of danger in it. What um, how can all these things be accommodated in um, uh, an outdoor environment? Environment. Andrew Goldsworthy does this with found objects in the landscape. So here he is creating these um, things. He'll just go to a site and I'm not sure of his method, but he reads the landscape, reads the site, reads the, the sort of environment and um, patterns. I gave a couple talks on Jungian foundations to uh, architecture, what resonates, what, um, what does a tower mean, what does a, 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 a sort of a dome-like womb mean, what does the axis mundi mean, coming through nature, through man, down to the the supernatural underworld, um, the spiritual world. What are the, what are these shapes that could resonate? How could he do it? Just finding stuff on site. I think he takes a hammer and uh, basic tools to cut with, 
but he he achieves these brilliant, beautiful, um, tenuous things in the landscape. More uh, tenuous things. Here's one he's most famous for. It's this finding these fall colors in the leaves and devising this spectrum with the black in the middle. Um, uh, very unique, um, I'm sure. There have been similar artists, but he is um, unrelenting. Here's more of the leaf study, and here's a study with icicles. And the reason I kind of showed him with this quick discussion on Carl Jung, Jungian subcurrent, subconscious, spatial things, and I know we, we get into um, a, a, a kind of a, a lower dialogue, uh, a lower debate when we start talking about race and gender and Jung. So herein I'm talking about Jung and space. Um, what possibly these connections were made in our epigenetic past. If, if we have certain resonances. I love going to mosques and seeing architecture in Islamic countries like Egypt, um, Morocco, Turkey, been to a couple others, Dubai. There's a greater sense of vaulting. <coughs> in <clears throat> Istanbul, I sort of followed a, a, a guide in Hagia Sophia um, uh, where he just described, he said the, the minarets, the, the, the spires, the towers on the four corners are the word and the dome is the mystery. Um, so it, it's, there's, there are ways of talking about this. And again, I'm, I was talking about your youth not knowing, I felt this too, coming from a tabula rasa, coming from rural Minnesota, uh, what do I know? How am I supposed to articulate um, a view, let alone understand the view of, of pop culture, what you should know, grocery list of books you should have read, which I'm a great big fan of the great books list. I followed it when I was young, maybe read 200 of them by the time I was 19. Um, and that served me well. That was my culture. Of course, it needs to include more women, open the canon up so it includes more women, more people of color who've contributed to Western society. It is not so much about delineation as finding an essence um, so that you can um, again found these um, these new discoveries you make on some sort of essence we don't we're we're a culture of amnesiacs we want to lose our memories by this constant present that the internet and TikTok and Netflix and all of this stuff gives us we wake up from a life and go like what did I do um, if you're Andy Goldsworthy, you got out into nature and made all these weird resonant forms. Here's the, the great sphere. Here's a, kind of a lightning bolt made of, of frozen ice that he, he forged up on a stone. Um, he's working magic with this palette of nature. What nature leaves him in northern Scotland, beautiful. It resonates with the landscape. Um, and so forth. Um, here's a famous, well, it's his book cover uh, where he cracks the stones and gives them a color and then um, uh, uh, rearrange them. Um, um, he has a lot in common with Robert Smithson. Um, uh, uh, t -t 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 two or three women um, installation artists that I forget. Um, they'll come back to me, who are dealing and making larger scale earthworks out in the American wilderness. Uh, Marfa is kind of an artistic community in rural Texas. I'm not quite sure where it is, but um, Donald Judd had his studio there, and he was an unrelenting minimalist. Um, 
um, and his writings on the principles of minimalism are pretty captivating. What does this have to do with providing a stage for a narrative? This is a narrative. This is Andy Goldsworthy's narrative, working out in the middle of um, nature, finding, procuring from nature, using his curiosity as a as a as a vacuum cleaner of vision. But I, I'm sure. Perhaps he hits on what trope, what shape, the why's to, why to once he notices color, notices form, notice what an early morning in northern Scotland is. He works all over the world now. Um, how would these things be sold in galleries? He's got commissions now like this, I think, is on a site somewhere. A lot of colleges will commission him to do um, site-specific sculptures. Um, I don't think he works with people, but um, these are resonant forms. Um, primitives, almost like modern ruins. Um, they look like ruins the moment they're created. Um, uh, very interesting. Again, resonates, this is the Great Serpent, the Great Serpent Wall. Uh, which resonates with the Arboros, the, the Jungian archetype of the snake or dragon eating its tail, sort of becoming recursive. Um, the snake in the original paradise um, giving Adam, Adam and Eve the apple of knowledge. Um, uh, snakes resonate. Uh, snakes, we have an epigenetic fear of snakes in general um, from many tens of thousands of years hanging out in trees and caves where they hang out also and they're venomous in general. So we have um, Goldsworthy resonating. It would be interesting to see an interview with him um, as what, what, what comes first. the the sensitivity to the landscape or the the preformed a priori idea do a snake um, do a serpentine form what is it um, and this is just a delightful stone wall um, here he is with gray rocks here he is here uh, we had some younger shots of him i like his work with ice which is just like the dancer underwater, it's, it's, it's fragile. There's a fragility. There's um, a, maybe he goes very early in the morning before the sun comes up in the fall or spring and does something with ice. I think I was in northern Scotland in mid-January, and it's such a maritime climate that, um, or just a dusting of snow, it would kind of dust. Um, but it was fairly, by East Coast standards, it was fairly warm um, and so forth. Here, his ice works here, more of his famous works. This tree in the middle of this cut rock thing is famous. His ice spiral around a tree. Again, all of this, here's a so-called spider web. Here's the vortex of, of original axis mundi. Uh, you can apply, oh, this is beautiful. The green leaves to the yellow leaves to the red leaves to the black leaves. This is amazing. Um, sensitive work. Here's his ice um, examples. Um, this discussion here, more of that on ice. Um, I don't even know how oh, we have the ladder there so they can do it carefully. Um, again, uh, uh, this is a sensitivity. This is a dialogue with one artist with nature in that Jungian sense he's uh, an individual human being sort of aligning himself with nature whether he or it or whether we feel a, a, a third sort of spirit or connection through um, a profundity you know that's neither nature or human but a third thing um, I don't know. These things portend that. They portend that they are creations. They don't belong in galleries. They're outside of the galleries like 
the the woman dancer in the 30 40 60 feet of water um, uh, but then you have this subject um, that takes over the subject of photography um, recording archiving um, um, not a lot has been said about the nature and importance of archiving um, even at the moment when we double the compiled knowledge of civilization every three days now or three hours some some absurd absurdly short thing here's his um, ice studies more stick studies and this was again a discussion on where to how to um, you say I uh, you know I chicken and egg I need money to start working um, no a truly creative person is continuously working um, that's why I wanted you to have a sketchbook that's why I've had a sketchbook since I was three or four or five can't remember they're all old um, but daily uh, to respond to um, the environment not just take a, a photograph they're fun the whole idea of the cell phone taking these photographs has expanded society but look at the beauty of this a, f a photograph um, that I don't have it in the syllabus but this is actually a good exercise for a team project when I'm back in the fall is to create these resonant um, Jungian architectural spatial objects somewhere out there um, and this um, looked like thistle with frost on it he probably gets out there very early in the morning and again these the uh, the kind of Fibonacci spiral the the golden section the the curve of beauty um, all of these things resonate through this um, I don't know what happened here how he carved that out um, but most of it is found objects um, uh, are his artworks are not permanent duh photography is crucial to his artwork so he's a low-tech guy um, responding to the genus loci of the setting but he needs the technology almost the sentience of photography to advance his cause so here again we see a tie-in with um, nature an individual person a man but also maybe this spiritual dimension of photography that he's added to the corpus of photography as as a subject if we want to get to um, delineating this these are beautiful um, so here it is um, more serpentine um, walls and woods I think these are commissions uh, he uses the heat from his mouth to glue together these icicles early in the morning um, it's a very special world very tuned in um, to most um, uh, so-called um, uh, materialist fetishist um, bean counters um, logicians this might seem to be crazy but just look at the beauty in how this is composed against the landscape um, the act of consciousness on the landscape again where is as Kant says the nomina where is the unspeakable where is Kant said we we to philosophize is to sin it's where on this thin crust of phenomena that encompasses the sphere of what we might know um, to chip away underneath toward the nomina is is to sin said Kant because we have to deal with um, in order to be rational and to to make a system of val evaluation for ethics and aesthetics we can only practice this was very groundbreaking in terms of German idealism we can only use concepts later Wittgenstein took this to mean language 
um, when we say what is love, love is different for many other, many different people. So this is part of the the, and I look at his work and wonder where is the spiritual in that. We tend to see this. Uh, oh, it's just a guy with a camera going out there, doing crazy things with the landscape. But it is somehow this whole alignment, nature, this guy, Andy Goldsworthy, something he's pointing to. He or maybe nature is pointing to it, or maybe the camera is pointing to it. And I don't, gang, I don't mean this literally. I mean it in the sense that Kant then Wittgenstein met, meant it to say there's a meaning in there somewhere, this dark morass or one day um, logical positivism and science, procedural science will figure out all these things who will only deal on a nominal level. Um, the, it's still bounded by this concept of death. We watched that film, The Future of Work and Death. Um, uh, your, your life is bounded. So even if you get your memories uploaded into a machine, you'll still be disembodied. So this object, Goldsworthy's, oh, look at that, that's so beautiful. Objects point toward realms to which this becomes a language, pointing toward realms, pointing toward itself, making the camera point at it, making Goldsworthy go out there, making him have a dialogue with the land. This is all, in a Kantian terms, work on the phenomenal crust. Um, and certainly I feel the resonances with the nominal world underneath, the world that is not pinpointed by language. Kobiansky, the great uh, semiotics sociologist, said looking for meaning with words is like looking for the darkness with a flashlight. Um, and so thus we need works of art, we need tropes pointing at varies. It's a system of pointing, um, not descriptive words. It's a system of, of alignment. Um, this is nature. This is a man. This is a resonant form. This is ice. This is fragile, like the dancer underwater. This is completely fragile. Half a day or just the morning, the thing will fall apart. So he's working the timing with the camera, just like the underwater dance. Um, no less dangerous here. The whole world is in balance for that moment to be recorded and then to be forgotten, to, to wave off into oblivion. Um, just like the, uh, the measuring figures in a Vermeer. Um, with it is the person, long dead, long bones and, and dust. Um, but the image remains from Vermeer, who might have jumped into a camera obscura at the far end of the room, record a, a beautiful young Dutch woman in the 16th century, 17th, um, weighing a judgment of the world. Um, um, those are very um, um, incredible of, of paintings themselves dealing with surface ice on the road these are very poetic things so I want to segue here to the found from the found world I think this is a commission um, once he became it's like duh once he becomes famous then he can call up these commissions we were talking about the the poor Buto performers, um, Hitchikata, uh, Katsuono, um, remaining in an obscurity, even though they were famous for what they did. Um, trees around stones, um, intentional landscapes, this is amazing. Um, feats that almost seem magical, or just basic work. Um, and then this disappeared, Oppenheimer, Dennis Oppenheimer did plenty of these. There were a lot of performance artists who went to site-specific art and so forth doing all of this stuff. 
um, and I guess he's famous for these serpentine walls around um, around um, uh, uh, trees. Um, this these are the spaces, the designated spaces. If we had a flashlight of language speaking about theater, we'd shine it into these spaces and say, ah, I know what theater is now. I know what staged performance and performing houses are. This is a music hall, so they're not concerned with, they probably have stage lighting up here, but they're there to hear the sound. It's a beautiful space. Um, types and forms of theater. Um, this is kind of a hybrid. It's in the round. It is a thrust, and they created a background for it. So I've shown you a lot of site-specific work, the dancer underwater, the Bouteau performers, the Rick and I going into an old office space on 36th Street that Orietta turned into a white box, a tabula rasa. These are any of anything. Um, these are devised pieces and so forth. Um, so these hold surprises in the arena theater is um, uh, uh, the Royal Exchange Theater is fun and, and mimics um, the globe, which was originally a bear and bull baiting pit where they tortured bears to death and bulls um, for money and gambling. So these became um, places of epic tragedy of, of Shakespeare, the committee. Um, thrust stage, um, I had done some early work at the Guthrie and the thrust stage there, which was famous. These tended to downplay the scenography, not creating an illusion and up playing the language and the form of the body, the acting, so writing, acting, um, uh, directing down into the audience is supposed to, uh, a lot like the Greeks too, to render something between a, a Brechtian stage where Brecht constantly talked about not suspending your disbelief um, in this stage work. In stage, I love these things. I love the industrial look of these things. I even kind of recognize this. The end stage is a very popular type. There are a few new spaces in New York like this. The environmental theater space was way big. I've designed quite a few of these. Um, the famous one is this Royal National Theater um, the Mysteries. Um, uh, this certainly is what um, Sleep No More is kind of about on steroids because there are 40 rooms for this, all very well done um, with detail, scenographic detail. Go and see it if you can. The Black Box Theater is fun and important in getting around to a, a theater of ideas again. Um, empathy, close empathy with the actors, charging up your mirror neurons to, um, to uh, jag you into some sort of uh, immediate um, empathy with the players. Studio theater, now they're just doing variations on the box. Um, uh, many people like flexible staging. They're developing a, a season, a repertoire. They want this all over the place. The um, uh, Orieta space is similar. We came in with the baffles, the periactoi, I called them, but they were white baffles on wheels and could con reconfigure the space in a matter of minutes. Uh, courtyard theater, much like the Blackfriars in Elizabethan England. Um, uh, the new one theater for a new audience, I think it is, um, in downtown Brooklyn, right across from BAM. BAM has um, the Majestic, which is a redone vaudevillian theater um, by Peter Brook um, for a production of Mahabharata, and they kept it. 
Um, the main opera hall is an opera hall. They have a new performance-like space next to it. Um, I have been going to BAM for years, Brooklyn Academy of Music, and it is a place where you can see important um, international performances, theater, dance, opera, and so forth. Proscenium, like you have arrived. You are in the upper, the birth of the bourgeois in the 19th century. You are looking across at other interesting, attractive people. You're looking at the stage and the ideas it presents there. It make no doubt, have no doubt that this is an event. This is an event that incorporates you also. Um, you're in there, people could be dressed up, could not, could be a, 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 a boring piece, fatuous piece, it could be something incredibly engaging and meaningful. Uh, thrust and open stage, so now there's just a combination of, of types. Um, here we get into music, we can see what difference it makes, there's less of a visual barrier. They're concerned with sound, but they're concerned with presenting a unit um, backstage. Kansas City, Missouri, Kaufman Center of Performing Arts. Um, I don't know if this is Frank Gehry. Um, could be Gary. It looks like um, Walt Disney Hall, a concert hall in Los Angeles is um, Frank Gehry. So we see this, this um, his form of organic deconstructivist architecture. Um, opera and dance. Um, opera is a biggie. Um, dance theater multiple uses, multi-form theater. Some of the theaters in Berlin were very excited because they would have this depth to it. Um, certainly the Italian uh, late Renaissance Baroque stages, uh, Teatro Olimpico, um, uh, started to portray, uh, well, early Renaissance started to portray one point perspective and then certain theater houses kept that going. Multi-use Broadway theater, there you go. Um, see a show. Um, showroom um, spaces for media interaction, what I do. Uh, projections all over the place. Here's a concert, I think this is in Frank Gehry's uh, Disney Hall in downtown LA. Uh, worship, meeting a worship, conference center seeing a boring conference, and certainly we've forgotten this out of COVID. This is a, a different landscape for us, houses of worships. Um, so that's on space, and this is on spaces also. So um, audience performer arrangements, you, you want to engage, um, you want to build that empathy, um, you want to showcase ideas, elicit debate, but sometimes human beings just aren't in the debating mood or aren't in the using the brain mood. So something about the empathy, something about a method actor crying because they lost their dog when they were five, run over, but they're doing Willie Loman. Um, there's something engaging about that in the sense we, we talked about Andy Goldsworthy as using the camera almost like it's invisible, but it's the elephant in the room. The, the photograph is the thing that made Andy Goldsworthy almost, not his going into nature and playing with um, uh, ephemeral things like ice early in the morning or leaves that turn brown and die. Um, so his, his elephant in the room, which he didn't want to, or maybe he does talk about it, is like, what's the elephant in the room with live performance after COVID? Um, we're a very incredibly social animal. We were missing the other bodies, but bodies bring infections. Um, um, 
we keep getting that lesson over and over throughout history um, and as in the movies um, 15 million merits um, uh, future of work and death um, technology cannot solve it all technology and the logical positivism that it implies um, begs larger questions like why should we get rid of death why I saw a piece at the armory called upload it was an opera about a daughter and father reacting to how the father willingly wants to upload his consciousness into a computer and thus die uh, kind of commit suicide with the body um, it, 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 the setting was amazing the the projections projection mapping but again uh, this is a pretty old trope by now there's even a, a Netflix series called Upload um, um, and Kurtzweil wants to do this with his father he wants to do it with himself he's talking about the singularity where the exponential um, bandwidth of, of computer processing will will uh, equal and surpass that of the biochemical bandwidth of the human brain. Um, interesting. Um, thrust, frontal, apron, extended, experimental. I hate that word experimental, but that's what people wanted when they see other people on the other side of the theater. Um, And this is dealing all with that in uh, one room with a grid. So this is um, uh, uh, a discussion of size of houses. I've designed for larger houses, but um, prefer um, the black box, the white box, the, the more architectural room. Uh, upstage, downstage. Um, uh, distance and detail, seeing more, seeing less. Um, these is the typical um, a horseshoe um, clamshell theater since um, uh, since Italy, 17th century, and it became the opera halls, and then it became the the music and the musical halls of Broadway. Um, this is it. Um, uh, so this is a, an extended lecture on, um, um, and the, these are attendant sound waves in that space. Um, um, this is, I wanted to show you that um, there are bona fide spaces for this. There are... Um, uh, standards there are um, precedents um, it's not all just jumping in a 60 foot deep tank um, of water and again her camera was her actual audience the medium can we can we escape from the camera we see it more and more I'm talking to you making these asynchronous pieces with the camera the camera is my interlocutor um, rather than you guys. Uh, and I can say these things and imagine what you might be thinking just seeing my little image up here. But for lecturing, it gives me more of a security blanket thing. Um, I need this to feel like I'm communicating. If only it's uploaded years from now and I'm gone, and um, there you have what I formerly look like at this time and place. Um, theaters are that way. We, uh, we have an evanescence about it. It's here and it's gone. Um, uh, like Andy Goldsworthy, you're out in wilderness doing it and um, your camera is your best friend. Your camera is your debate team, your interlocutor, your, your connection with even paying the rent because um, we talked about the concept of work, leisure, and something else. 
um, that leisure becomes stratified and commodified um, uh, if you're not wise enough to stop that. Um, it um, becomes a process of, of engagement, non-engagement. So when we go to a theater, we drive there, we take the subway, we go in town, we see these things. These have um, uh, a resonance uh, just simply because we took the pilgrimage there. I mentioned this in another essay, fantastic essay by Walter Benjamin, the work of art in the age of mechanical reproduction says that uh, um, aura is the essence of a work of art and it's present there because of ritual. He, like all of these people, Kobiansky and um, all these people, Kant and Wittgenstein, or maybe inspired by Kant and Wittgenstein, saying that um, it's an aura. We don't know what it is, but there's some aura that started from the ritual value of cave paintings, and there's a ritual process of embodiment going to do these things, like Andy Goldsworthy, like a, a cave artist, going deep to paint pictures. Um, um, and Benjamin said that is the thing that withers in this era of mechanical reproduction. And he was talking about mechanical reproduction, photography, uh, industrial processes, early automation. Um, I can only imagine what he would think. And he was basically killed on the border of Spain and France trying to escape um, Nazi agents um, as he was a Jewish intellectual who didn't leave Berlin in time because of his books. Um, it's interesting, uh, gentleman Walter Benjamin, um, as a social critic, um, ostensibly Marxist, but knows enough about semiotics. Um, uh, the work of art, the aura is that which withers in the era of mechanical reproduction meaning that the more we punch these things out, they lose their mystical um, aura value. Um, and in a sense, just like Andy Goldsworthy, to go to a theater and see um, a performer, I saw four hours of, of a Eugene O'Neill play, um, um, performed by... Um, Oh God, I forget his name. Famous movie actor or um, these English actors cut their chops in um, uh, uh, classical drama. Um, that we need a training. We need a training to say the same lines again, but these actors are reacting to the audience. Uh, Jeremy Irons, that's his name. I saw four hours of him playing the patriarch and um, uh, uh, this is interesting what are, what are they trying to achieve by replying um, citing these lines again and again um, it's a different you saw the movie King Lear with Anthony Hopkins it's there's a difference with um, movie um, movies apart from this little object you wind up and set go. Um, there's uh, post-production and all this other stuff attended with that. So that's um, a quick discussion on um, uh, on uh, the idea of um, starting with Andy Goldsworthy outside looking at theater houses, achieving some sort of um, notion that it's about sight and context and you have to be sensitive wherever you go. And just to keep reinforcing this sense, the chicken and egg sense, like I need money in order to be an artist. No, you need um, deep and abiding curiosity to be an artist, which... Um, Famously, um, Einstein quoted the most important thing 
that he considered a human quality was creativity and curiosity. So there you have it. Um, we shall see you in the next lecture.